Guys, welcome back to Precision Rifle Network. Today, we're doing a deep dive into the six millimeter arc cartridge. Okay guys, so in detail today, we're gonna to be talking about the six millimeter arc cartridge. It's gonna be a deeper dive. I'm gonna break down all the components of the rifle and just talk about the Seekins rifle as well. I'm gonna be getting some chronograph numbers with the um, long shot bullet seeker device. Also gonna be testing out for the first time this little rear rest. It's kind of a mechanical guy used mostly for bench rest, um, but I thought I'd try it out today. Uh, they sent it to me and I thought I'd just give that a try. I'll leave a link to the product down in the description below. I'm gonna be using the Hornady Match uh, ELDMs. This is the 108 grain for the six millimeter arc. So get some SD number, some extreme spread on that. Hopefully a decent group down here and uh, get going. There we go. I feel like you gotta kinda lock it into place like just below your aiming point and then it kinda settles right onto your aiming point. I feel like I'm struggling with this rest. The rifle shooting sub them away. I'm struggling with that guy. It actually, when I do, when I get it set just right and try to keep my body completely out of it, it does exactly what it's supposed to. I'm getting sub MOA groups out of that thing. Close to half an inch. But as soon as I, and it's just like anything, but as soon as I get my body into it and I get just that little bit of like breathing wobble, then the group grows <laughs> significantly. So I've got it. All right, guys, I've got a target down there centered in the scope at 200 yards. And this is really just to get chronograph data. So I'm using the bullet seeker out on front of the rail there. That should get our chronograph data for five to 10 shots. And I've got the trigger cam going on the target. Hopefully the battery lasts long enough for you to be able to see something. So here we go. Right on it. Same spot. I gotta make sure that is actually picking up velocity data here. But it's not picking up. Should be. Figured while I'm loading up this mag, I just tell you that this is a um, an AR Stoner a 6.5 Grendel magazine. Um, I haven't had any trouble with any of the magazines that I've that I've used. I've used um, now this is an Elander 6.5 Grendel mag, and this is the Amend 2 6.5 Grendel mag. They all work great. I've had no issues with feeding or malfunctions or ejection or anything due to magazines. So I thought I'd throw that out there. All right, so chronograph gave me a little bit <laughs> of trouble today. So you probably saw me cut that a little bit, but need it suffice to say, I ended up getting it to connect and work and everything. Um, this ammo is giving me an average of 2693 feet per second, standard deviation of 10 and an extreme spread of 24 which, you know, for, for a cartridge, number one for factory ammo, 100% okay with that. Um, that 24 extreme spread isn't gonna start affecting me until I get out, you know, beyond 800 yards probably, and I'm probably not gonna do that with this rifle. Um, this is, you know, considered a, a DMR style gun. What that means kind of by definition 
is typically inside of 600 yards if you have to put a yardage number on it. It's obviously capable beyond that. You could target shoot with it as far as you can make impacts, obviously. Go out, have fun, it's capable, it's soft shooting. But if we're looking at, you know, shooting game and things like that, that's another story which we'll get into. But for now, I just wanted to give you that stat on the, on the ammo. Um, I'm gonna now stretch this out to the distance that I can see. I can barely see the top of the 600 yard target over the crop, so probably we'll stop at five. But I've got white targets out there painted with a black water line across, and the goal is to go at each of those distances and shoot a couple of shots and see how high above or below that water line my impacts end up being. And then I can true up my data in my Kestrel based off of that. This should be about a one mil call. Let's see what we get. We were quite low. I'm gonna pause and check that Kestrel real quick. All right, guys, going again here. Kestrel's calling for 1.2, which I think is still gonna be low, but we're gonna go ahead and fire that shot anyway and see if it actually comes up appropriately. Yep. Gonna come up. Two more, no one more. Fire again at the 300. You know, that one was high. I could have sunk on the bag, so I'm firing one more. There we go. There's our water line. So, we actually took one point two, let's see. Yeah, one point two to get water line, and the Kestrel actually said one point two, so I must have just bonehead just didn't see the line correctly. So we're lined up at three. Let's go to four. My wind is looking like a little bit right to left, but that three hundred yard gave me no indication of wind whatsoever. I'm gonna favor right. We are on the water line. Yep, 400 yard data is good. Let's go to five. On the water line, because I can't see the shot. Yep, right on the water line. There we went a little bit high. I'm gonna finish out these shots on that water line at five and see if that's just me or. Yeah, last shot was just me because we're back on the water line again. That's looking good. So the data lines up. Good, good. All right guys, I thought we'd pause here in the middle and talk about the rifle. This is a Seekins SPS and it's your standard you know, run of the mill. It's kind of their lower end. No, you can't call a Seekins a lower end, can you? They're they're all pretty dang great, but it's not the law enforcement model, which is which they. My understanding about the law enforcement model of this of this rifle is that they kind of go into just a a little bit more quality control processes to make sure the tolerances are super tight and it shoots super amazing. So this is considered the lower level of the options that they that they offer it's about a seventeen hundred dollar rifle and um, again chambered in six arc and you can get them in all different kinds of configurations creed moors and 308 you name it but um, i wanted the six arc because i i intend on using this as a competition gun a gas gun for competitions uh, the field style sniper type matches like the competition dynamics, Team Safari, um, <clears throat> and Steel Safari, Steel Safari, and stuff like that. 
And to me, I felt like the six arc was the the better caliber for that. Now, there's all kinds of uh, of arguments that can be made for and against 308, for and against 6.5 Creed. Uh, for me, the 6.5 Creed more, I have not met a 6.5 Creed more gas gun yet that has no malfunctions. Something almost always malfunctions on a 6.5 Creed gas gun. And of course, there's going to be people that chime in in the comments and be like, well, my 6.5 gas gun has never had an issue. Well, shoot it enough and, and it probably will. I've, I've had guys that, that have had high-end custom-built 6.5 Creeds down to store-bought 6.5 Creeds. You name it. When it comes to something with I don't know, just the length of that of that cartridge and the gas pressure and just fine-tuning those things. You might have to fine-tune a lot in order for you to get any kind of reliability out of it. So I knew I didn't want 6.5 Creedmoor because in competition I can't be having any kind of malfunctions. I knew I didn't want 308 because also in competition I'm looking for soft recoil. I'm looking for being able to mitigate that, that recoil, manage it to the point that I'm not coming off target very far. I'll be able to spot my impacts and misses, stay in the rifle, those sorts of things. And with a gas gun being harder to drive than a bolt action, generally speaking, just because there's more movement in the system, right? Most people don't run gas guns as well as bolt guns. There's a lock time issue as well, those sorts of things. Um, so I wanted a soft shooting cartridge. and. I could have gone 224 Valkyrie, which would be probably a step better yet, but spotting impacts and misses on a Valkyrie is a little bit more difficult because it, especially when you get out to far targets, because it's just such a small, tiny little round, you don't get a lot of feedback. So I think this is a good happy medium. So six arc, four competition, gas guns seems to be a really good option. Um, as far as the rest of the rifle is concerned. You're looking at a 22 inch barrel. Um, I've got a, a brake up here that I believe is, I can't remember where the brake's from, but it's specifically designed to run my suppressor, my dead air. It's got the dead air chemo um, up here on the front. And I usually run a suppressor on this rifle. So my zero was off a little bit there today when we started because I forgot my suppressor at home. So we're running just with the brake and it's obviously shooting very well. I'll throw kind of final group up onto the, the screen for you. It's sub MOA and I'm happy with that for anything I might need to do in, in these competitions. Um, you know, the rifle's gonna outshoot my ability to call the wind correctly at far distances or whatever. So not worried about that. Um, I choose the Atlas Cal um, currently for bipod really like it but honestly this is kind of for plinking as soon as i go to a competition or something like that i switch to the the double pull sky pod mdt sky pod just because there's there's hardly there's like no problems i can't solve out in the field with that double pull sky pod i'm able to get up and over and around a lot of obstacles at weird angles with that double pull sky pod that i can't do with a standard bipod that you would use in say PRS competition or just you know plinking at the range like today. So coming back, the grip back here, nice ultra lightweight vertical grip from MK Machining. There's a coupon code down in the description guys if you wanna save a little bit of money over at MK Machining, you can check that out. I just really like how flat it is, great texture all the way around, hollowed out in the middle so that you've got just a lightweight but very positive grip here fits my hand perfectly it just works so well on an AR um, yeah I just I just love that I've got the um, zero compromise 4 to 20 uh, up on top I like the MPCT 1 reticle which is just their standard crosshair no Christmas tree at all um, with my older eyes I'm having more difficulty spotting impacts and misses so the Christmas tree tile reticle is just not my my choice anymore i really go for minimalist still got my two tenths hash marks still got a floating center dot that i love um, obviously the trigger cam doesn't stay up here except for when i'm trying to record video i do have a uh, a night vision bridge up here it's actually not for night vision but for uh for an ir light laser combo that i mount up there and then i have a clip on night vision for the front of here if i want to if i want to go dark and quiet um, everything else is fairly stock and standard about this gun. 
Um, I have not swapped out the trigger yet. That will probably get swapped out to, I think actually it's a Timney trigger in here. Um, I will most likely swap that out to a Trigger Tech Diamond two stage for, um, for this gas gun. I just really like the feel of that. Right now it feels a bit heavy um, for just what I was finding out today. So um, that's the rifle. You guys can leave questions down below uh, if you'd like. Um, one other thing that I will note uh, about the rifle is this rail. And this is a Seekins rail here, and this is the longest one they offer. I don't know if you can see it very much, but where my finger is here and here, this is the longest one they offer. Um, and just the way that the slots match up from the rail to the rail of the rifle, I can have it one of two ways. Like if you're, I can either put it all the way up front because I'll, I'll be able to run my bipod further forward, which is what we want, or I can run it further back, which is where I like to clip in to a tripod when I'm shooting tripod. And this gun is gonna be used a lot off of a tripod. So I decided that I didn't need this extra couple of inches up front. I pushed the rail to the back so that I can run my tripod right up against the balance point in the back of the rifle here. So that, that was a trade-off. I'd rather not have a trade-off. I'd rather that they made their rail, their, their ARCA rail, the same length as the long rail for their gas guns. That makes sense to me. I'm not quite sure why that's not a thing, but that would be one downside. But other than that, guys, everything in the rifle runs great, shoots great, zero malfunctions, all the magazines it runs with, the ammo shoots great, standard deviation to 10, extreme spread of 24 or something like that. Perfect drop data out to 500 yards. If I could see the 600 yard target, I'm sure it would be dead nuts on out there too. Hunting with this, you know, the energy is there for whitetail or coyotes or, you know, whatever you might need at that, you know, realistic 300 to 500 yard range. You're going to down just about anything you need um, within that range. You know, obviously wouldn't recommend it for, for big game like elk and, uh, you know, moose and things like that. It's not the point. I just, I did want to touch on hunting stuff because some people ask, well, like, you know, what's the actual practical point of it if you're not just plinking targets? You could hunt with it, right? I guess that's the whole that's the whole point of that. You could hunt with it. The energy's there. And depending on bullet, you're going to have great expansion and, and all that kind of stuff. But, but really, you know, a gas gun is made for tactical applications. Like, let's be honest, that's what the gun was designed for, is so that you can make rapid shots, rapid follow-up shots, and those sorts of things at distances from contact distance all the way out to, let's say, 600 yards, which is kind of falls in the definition of a designated marksman rifle. And so, you know, those guys, and I was never in the military, so take it for whatever it's worth, but I have taken two different um, designated marksman rifle courses over the years. And in those courses, we learned how to employ gas guns as a precision tool quickly from all different kinds of positions um, similar to what we'd find in PRS, but you got to be able to do it quickly with rapid follow-up shots. And it's not so much about, you know, one shot, one kill kind of thing. It's about putting accurate fire very close to what you want to hit, if not hitting it. Of course, the goal is to hit the thing the first time, but you want very accurate aimed fire um, for a specific purpose, whether it's to keep an enemy's head down or it's to take out a certain thing, you know, whatever it might be. It's a certain tool for a certain job, right? But for us, for us common guys, we like to just come out to the range like today, have a nice soft shooting cartridge. It doesn't break the bank. I think, you know, a box of ammo is right around 30 bucks, or something like that which is, you know, it's more expensive than it used to be, but it's really not that bad in a world of, you know, $2, $2.50, $3 a shot ammo. You know, 30 bucks a box is really not all that bad. So you can come out and have a day of, of entertainment for not that much money in a system that's not going to hiccup, you're not going to get malfunctions, and you're going to get the accuracy that you want to hit the targets that you need to hit. So all in all, it's just a really great system. Okay, I've got a target cam. The long shot um, camera system now is mounted up down there at the 
500 yard line and if it worked you'll see that pop up on your screen my data was three mils for that distance my wind is switching a little bit it's close to a full value three to five i'm just going to favor right on it and we went left shoulder and a little bit high so that looks like actually oh four tenth three tenth four tenth wind so i'm going to come over make my adjustment here Yeah, that was centered back up on the water line. All right, fun. All right, so it looks like a mess. I wanted to give you guys today a group at 100 yards and a group at 500 yards. So you're just gonna have to take my word for it. I, I don't have any reason to lie to you guys, okay? Um, my group ended up being one, two, three, four. Oh, now I'm losing it. Maybe it's here. There's one, two, three. I see some splash marks right there. I'm thinking that's four. So one, two, three, four, five. That was the group here at 500 yards. That measures probably, I don't know. It's hard to say. Four inches, maybe. Right in there. That was the group. These were all just figuring wind, initial shots, those sorts of things. When I settled down to do a group and aim here, this was the group I got. So, shoots very well, guys, with that factory ammo. No complaints from me whatsoever. Well, guys, hopefully you got something out of the longer video today. The Seekins SPS ran great. Obviously hitting uh, my group at 525 yards or what, 500 yards was sub MOA, probably three quarter um, MOA there at 500 yards and then similar results at that 525 yard target. I couldn't get an impact that I could tell at the 600 yard plate, it's completely covered um, with crops and so really couldn't tell on that. Um, everything else looked great. I'll show you the 100 yard groups as well if I haven't already. In the video i'm not sure where i'm gonna put it but if i hadn't put it anywhere i'm putting it right now the 100 yard groups ended up being uh sebo moe as well again the horner d 108 ammo the eldms was was good just barely under 2700 feet per second i'm just over 2700 feet per second when i put my suppressor on i gain about 20 feet per second um the group the group size with the suppressor and I didn't test any of that today, but I'll just let you know, like I have a dead air Sandman, uh, the seven inch <clears throat> version. And um, when I put the, the can on, I get about uh, a four tenths. Uh, it's more than that. It was more like a mil and a half shift, kind of high and left with my can. So running it without that today. And so not only does the velocity increase by about 20 feet per second when I put the can on with this same ammo, um, my zero shifts and my group actually grows to right at one MOA when I put the can on. Still entirely acceptable. Like, you know, I'm not going to shoot better than that at the distances that I'm going to be using this on the target sizes that I'm going to be using it. So really doesn't matter. It's a non-issue. The zero comp optic, obviously, you know, high end, like awesome. Running the Audier mounts, I didn't say that before. If you guys haven't heard of Audier, um, they're kind of a competitor, I don't know if they are a competitor to Spur or not, but they're in the same vein, like over-engineered, high quality, little bubble level built in here. All the extra holes around it so you can mount stuff like, you know, laser um, or IR type bridges on them or, you know, levels on the sides or whatever you might want. Audier, you can check them out too from MK Machining along with the grip. So. Check out those um, those affiliate links, guys, down in the description below. Save yourself some money on some gear you might already be buying anyway. You also got to see Ron the long shot scope cam today at that 500 yard target. Works pretty well. It has some limitations as far as like using it for um, recording video that you're going to put on the internet. Like it's not in 16.9. Uh, format and so you end up having to crop or zoom the size in order to get it to fit so for creators out there if you're thinking about it 
it's it, it takes a little bit of work around and then also i use the long shot uh, bullet seeker for getting my chronograph data and for some reason when I had it mounted underneath the rail probably 12 inches away from the muzzle uh, it was not picking up but there's another little mount that it comes with I attached it right to the barrel right behind the muzzle brake and then it picked up and recorded the shots no problem whatsoever I also tried putting it right up here on top but again I think it maybe it's just a little too far back or something it just wasn't picking them up uh, but usually it works flawlessly and I will have you know I thought it was kind of interesting the um, my Bluetooth axle uh, X core earbuds was synced with my phone Bluetooth with my phone so I was getting music through there and at the same time the the, the uh, bullet seeker chronograph it talks to you through the app and that audio was also coming through here telling me the feet per second um, of the, each shot that was fired. So I didn't know that it would do that, have multiple things Bluetoothed at the same time, and the audio would still come through the earbuds, but it did, and so that was a pleasant surprise. So you can check those out. There's a coupon code for those as well. Guys, I don't have anything else to offer you today. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and stay tuned for more great videos from Precision Rifle Network.